James Kaufman, World News Report, today, July 28, 2024. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at Lasco C3, and these are just some of the new M flares that have been slung at Earth today. We're going to take a look at those. And we're going to talk about yesterday's CMEs that have turned into a cannibal CME already. NOAA warning, extreme cannibal CME alert inbound. A series of M-class solar flares over the weekend hurled multiple coronal mass ejections towards Earth. As many as four or five at the time of this statement. But since then, the statement has been updated. We have had several additional strong M-class solar flares that have been Earth-directed, including an M7.7 solar flare and an M7.6 solar flare. These two additional M-class solar flares, seen here on Lasco C3, along with several other smaller M-class solar flares, they were also Earth-directed and stayed in M-class solar flare territory for over five hours. Not to mention the M9.92 solar flare we had earlier this morning are all inbound. At this point, no complete models are available of this extraordinary event. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an unheard of event scheduled for the 30th and 31st of July. And remember, we still have not had the complex sunspot group that generated the X14 solar flare become Earth-facing, which will occur within the next three to four days. Now, these are yesterday's so, uh, M flares. And out of that, both NASA and NOAA predict a cannibal CME that they say has already joined together. We did see that on NASA's ISWA spiral last night, but it's blank right now. So these flares we were already dealing with. After that, we got a 9.92 solar flare, followed by another smaller solar flare, and we had a short break there. After that, we had another M-class solar flare that popped out at, I believe, about a 7.7. .7. That is correct. And you can see that it lasted from 10.30 on to 3.30. And that is your five hours of constant M-flaring. Nothing we've really ever seen before. Now, that was followed up, and I don't know if I mentioned it. I believe it's a 2... 0.5 solar flare. I think it was a little stronger than that. We'll see in just a second. A 2.62 M-class solar flare. Again, then we had a little break and we've already had another M-class solar flare. So, I'm not going to try to guesstimate, but it looks like we had five, uh, five M-class solar flares yesterday. Six, seven, and then this long-term event that they count as two solar flares, eight, nine, and we've just had another M-class solar flare, making it the 10th, 10th M-class solar flare, Earth-directed within the last 20 hours. Unheard of. All right, here we go. An M9.92 popped off early this morning. And we see it, well, right here is an M9.7. Uh, now, before that, they're claiming that an M7.7 .7 popped off. We'll have to take another look at that. Um, that adds to the count. We also had then the smaller M1.5 that we discussed. And these are coming from three different sunspots, which we will go over. All of them or earth facing all right then we had a short break we're running what a c4.41 baseline we almost were running an m baseline i guess there for five hours then we had an m7.6 that i showed y'all 
that started the five-hour period of constant M flares, and the bump in the road on the way to the end was an M 2.6 solar flare. These were sympathetic solar flares coming from two different sunspots. It's been an incredible day. That could mean as many as 11 coronal mass ejections are inbound and they say the first coronal mass ejection is already a cannibal CME and it will clear the way quote unquote for the following CMEs again there has been no model made this would be one of the most complex models ever we still have only a 10% chance of X flare which I believe is laughable only a 60% chance of M class solar flare Although we've had 11 of them in the last 20 hours and a 99% chance of a C-class solar flare, ladies and gentlemen, we haven't broken into a B baseline in several months, as you know. All right, there's been several large M flares. They look to all have created halo, halo CMEs, which means they will impact Earth. Uh, those were generated from 3762 from 3766, and believe it or not, from 3767. Now I will show you all those on HMI Magnetosphere so that we can see how complex they are. But please also remember, we have the complex sunspot group that generated the X14 solar flare coming around the limb in three or four days, maximum. This is going to be well, a tough month. Heading over to our absorption prediction D region model, we catch the very last part of that strong M7.7 solar flare, God's number, right? And uh, that is not the peak. The peak happened slightly before this. I just wanted to show y'all, and that's the 2.1, I believe. And we've had a very strong baseline with everyone getting plenty of radiation ever since then. Again, not to mention the 11 plus M class flares that popped off that were Earth directed. They haven't decided how many of those created coronal mass ejections. My guess is all of them. All right, this is our NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center. And in fact, this is what they believe happened yesterday. It has not been updated. This is, uh, well, they claim that the first two coronal mass ejections have morphed together already into a cannibal CME that will clear the way for the 9.92 and the 7.7, .7, etc. This will not be a good day if our atmosphere is cleared up by the first cannibal set of CMEs followed by everything that's occurred today. Now this is NASA's Goodard is with spiral and Earth is this yellow dot here. These are all of our satellites and planets connected by the black and white ropes. These are our geomagnetic connections and these ropes are why some of the flares that occur on the departing side are actually geoeffective towards Earth. The energy comes through these ropes. Likewise, with any huge eruption, even a backside one on the sun, all of the geomagnetic connections are charged and move out towards the satellites and the planets that, they're pull, that the sun is pulling through our Milky Way. The statement continues, Soho chronographs show a wagon train of clouds leaving the Saturday Sunday party on July 27th and 28th. It continues, the most potent of these coronal mass ejections was launched by an M9.9 .9 class solar flare from Sunspot Complex AR 3765 and 3767 at 1.57 this morning on July 28th UTC time. With little interplanetary material to slow it down, 
the storm cloud should reach Earth no later than July 31st. A preliminary NASA model supports this forecast. And NOAA, let's not forget the 7.6 solar flare that popped off after that one, right? And let's not forget the five hours in M territory directly facing with ongoing solar flares. If G2 or G-class storms are underway on July 30th, the arrival of several more coronal mass ejections on July 31st could elevate the storm dramatically to levels of G4, G5, or stronger. The statement has the audacity to end. This would set the stage for mid-latitude auroras visible from central U.S. and from Europe. Stay tuned for updates. Chromas ejection impact on the way.